When we think about Siberia, the last thing we think about are the kings of online poker. But there is one that wears a crown from that neck of the woods. Timofey Trutella Kuznetsov has earned more than 5 million playing online poker cash games. And in this episode of I Am High Stakes Poker, we learn about Trutella's journey into poker via Siberia and Moscow. He shares his views on purpose, values and vision. And we also hear how he had to shed his introverted nature in order to be one of the greatest high stakes poker players of his generation. Timothy, how's life? Good. You doing well? Yeah, really good. Uh, we're in Montenegro, what do you think of the place? I really like the nature here, it's really nice. It's a bit, bit cold this year, this time, but uh, like, it's, it's really fresh here. We haven't had the weather. No, no, the weather was pretty bad. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, where you grew up. I grew up in a small town uh, in Siberia. It was, it was a pretty nice town, I'd say. It's like many, many of the former scientists live there. It's like a small, nice area. Then I moved, when I was 17, I moved to Moscow to study. Studied uh, at Moscow State University, studied mass, uh, applied theory of probabilities. When I think about Siberia, coming <laughs> yeah. from the West and never being there, I just think cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of cold, but it's not like sick cold. The upside is very dry and sunny. So it's, if it's like minus 20 Celsius and if it's, it's dry, it doesn't feel as cold as maybe minus 10 Celsius and wet. Because like, when the air is not humid, it's uh, harder to lose heat. And what, what's, it, what's it like? Is, uh, obviously, I've, I've never been to that uh, mm -hmm. part of the world. I, I go to somewhere like a Korea or Tokyo, <laughs> and it's just like Gotham City. You know, I've yeah. been to London, it's huge. And, and I think in my head that Siberia would just be like completely naturized. Well, what is it like? Yeah, I mean, it's a, like it's a huge area of like forest and just land, un uninhabited, like no people there. I and mean, it's the biggest forest in the world. It's probably the size of the US or something like that. That, like if you take the whole tiger. Uh, what was the best thing about growing up there as a kid and what is the worst? The best thing? Uh, the people there are pretty nice and the nature is really good. So I think it's really healthy to grow up there. In the town I left, lived, there is no like factories or any production. So the air is really clean. And the town is basically in a forest. Mm -hmm. So between like sort of trees all over the place, like I, I walk from my home to school through the forest basically. No way. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. You have tigers there? No, we don't have tigers. We have wolves. Right. Yeah, but no, like not not in the city. <laughs> <laughs> if you go like, somewhere out, like you might might meet a wolf, but like I never met one. <laughs> So you moved to Moscow when you're 17. Is that is that almost like a necessity? Are you thinking to yourself, I I if I want to become someone or do something grander, I need to get away from Siberia, or is, is that um, why you have Moscow? I was always looking for, like, to do something really good, I'd say. I, I could have stayed in Siberia, I, I was thinking about that. We have a really nice university there, too. But I was really good at maths when I was at school. I was taking part in, like, all sorts of competitions. Like, I was going to different towns to take maths competitions, and even to different countries twice take place there and like they I, I thought it would be good to, to go to Moscow because it's still the, like, the best place in Russia to study it's a really good place to study mass too one of the best in the world how far is it from Moscow to Siberia it's like a lot three thousand kilometers oh, so you when you go there uh, you is it are you with other friends or is it you're all alone and you have to make new friends? I, I moved there, yeah, I had, I had to make a lot of new friends. Uh, two of the guys I studied, or maybe three of the guys I studied with moved from uh, Siberia to Moscow too. So you wasn't completely alone? No, no, and my parents moved to Moscow too as well, so I was not completely alone. And, and at know. that time in your life, who, was there anyone that was like a really big influence or a real big inspiration for you at that time? No, I wouldn't say so. I was like beating my head <laughs> until very late, I would say. What did you say? You was in your head? Yeah, in, in my head I wasn't like... Like an uh, like introvert? Yeah, yeah, very introverted until I was like 21 or 22, I would say. Before you got to 21, 22, back to uh, being in Moscow and studying, you're really, really good at maths. 
Where did you think that that would take you? Did you ever think forward to you know to the future? Yeah, I, I was do? thinking forward to the future. I didn't know exactly what I would do. I was thinking I might be involved with uh, like some stock trading, some hedge funds and stuff. Or like, when I started studying, I was doing some uh, consulting competitions like KPMG or McKinsey hold some. I was taking part in those and I was doing good. And I was thinking um, I might become a consultant for one of those companies in Moscow. But then with my second year of uh, university, I started uh, playing poker and uh, I really liked to play. And I started doing good pretty early. So then I decided uh, I'm not going to purchase a normal career anymore. I'm going to try to do it in poker. How did how did poker start for you? Was it a live game? Was it online? Online. My friend started playing uh, and he won like 7k US in a few months. And I was thinking, oh, it's pretty cool. And I, like, I was always very competitive, so I decided, okay, okay it's a game. I always like to play games and you can win a lot of money in it. So I'll try to do that. What, coming from Siberia and then moving to Moscow, starting to play poker, what, what's your belief? around money at the time? How was you, like, are you thinking to yourself, I want to be a millionaire? Are you, have you got your feet on the ground? I mean, where, where was you with money at that age? Oh, I had a pretty, like, high belief in myself. Uh, when I started playing poker, I was planning to make 10 million years from it. So it's like more than most people plan to make when they start playing. So was that, when, when you were thinking that, is, do you look back on that now? Is that an overconfidence or was that, no, I was confident and I did it? I mean, it was overconfidence in a way, but uh, overconfidence sometimes doesn't hurt. So you never got a job? You, you were studying and no, you just fell in love no, with poker? No, I never got a job. No, I never worked a single day. What did your um, parents think about your choice? Uh, first year when I was playing poker and I wasn't making that much money still, they didn't like it a lot because it was obvious for them I could have a good career in uh, like finance, stocks or anything. So, so they were thinking like, what am I doing with my life, playing cards? Yeah. Um, I was like, no, I'm, I like it, I really like it. But then when I was, when I started winning a lot, my, my father understood it's the right thing for me to do and started supporting me, my mom too. Was there ever a time either you, you bink something big in a tournament or you you want a big amount of money one night and then you kind of come downstairs or something or you ring your parents and be like, look at this. I mean, it was a thing like that. I was the third year of my college. It wasn't a tournament. It was like one month I did win a lot on cash games. I was thinking to go to the like summer school for KPMG or something like that. And I, uh, I, I could go there, but like I needed to make a decision if I'm going there or not. But then one month I made like 40K US uh, playing cash, so I decided, okay, <laughs> I don't need to go to summer school anymore. So you're a little bit of an introvert. You fall in love with online poker. Yeah. I imagine in order to win the money that you were winning, you were really putting the hours in. Yeah, I was putting a lot of hours in. How, how do you then deal with that like lack of socialization? How do you become better at socializing and mixing people? Because you said around 2021, you started to be more outgoing. What happened? Uh, I just realized I'm not very happy because I'm introverted and started changing myself. I mean, I didn't like I didn't reflect too much about my own emotions and about like how I feel before that age at all. So, mm. so I, I started the past and, and I went a few steps. So I'm a bit better now. <laughs> Are we saying that? Uh, because of the isolation of the game that you started to get lonely? Mm, I'm not lonely now at all. No, back then? Back then? I don't think the game made me lonelier because I was, I was sort of lonely without the game too. The mm -hmm. game for sure made me stronger and made me respect myself more. It's easier in school. You know when you're in school and, yeah. you, and, you, and you think to yourself, I need to make friends? You can just go out into the playground at dinner yeah. time and make them. <laughs> but when you're 20, 21 and you, you think to yourself, I need to make friends, it's a lot more complicated. How did you go about it? Yeah, but I, I didn't think like I need to make friends. I don't think you can make friends like that. <laughs> it's just people around you. I, I started playing live poker when I was 23 maybe or something like that. And there were pre, pre, like a lot of cool guys in Macau where I started playing. So I got plenty of friends there. 
as I met, met some guys in Moscow too who are poker players. Almost all of my friends now are poker players, so that's the way I socialize. When did you make the decision to go from online poker to live poker? Mm. I mean, I played two tournaments before that, but like the, really the decision was one time in 2014, I was playing online uh, triple draw, and uh, it was like a game running a lot. And then with Gas and Summer of Sun, I think. And then one week, uh, Gas and Summer of Sun lost a lot, and I lost a lot too, and the game stopped. And then for like a few weeks, there were no action online, like hires and 1020, no limit anymore. And I was stuck a lot, so I'm like, ah. It hurts. I need to get out somehow. <laughs> I need to find big action and nobody w was willing to play big. So I'm like, okay, heard about this Macau thing. I'm going to go. <laughs> and I went with one of my friends to Macau first time. Are you a very spontaneous person? I wouldn't say I'm very spontaneous, but somewhat. And what are the, what are the types of values that uh, kind of drive you in life? What's important to you about how people behave and how you behave? I'd say for, I will you like fun times in life. I, I really don't like when it's boring or to do something that I don't want to be doing. People I value, smart, funny, honest people. Who are some of the funniest people that you know in poker? Uh, from, what, from what white public wouldn't know, I would say Tan Shuan. <laughs> Right, funny. He is like sick funny. <laughs> he maybe speaks uh, 250 words of English. He is constantly improving, but he's really fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> like the intonation he uses and some, some of the stuff he says. <laughs> he's a really smart guy. Did you ever try to learn Mandarin? Yeah, a bit. Any it's, good? it's pretty hard. I think uh, I, I know like 150 words or something. Uh, I, I stopped now, but maybe I'll go back to learning it. Like we had a bet with Django Man who would learn Mandarin better, but we were doing both pretty bad of it. He you was, it out. <laughs> yeah, he was doing a bit better, so I paid him some uh, penalty <laughs> for buying out. What is it about people that irritates you? Irritate me? I wouldn't say too many people irritate me. Is, is there particular behaviors or habits or things that happen in the world that get on your nerves? I mean, when something is... Uh, unfair in a way and it's uh, nothing to be done about it that, it, that I would say that irritates me. Like let's say, yeah, let's say I got cheated in a poker game and uh, like and the cheaters got out with the money and there is no way I can do anything about it. That would irritate me for sure. And it, that did irritate me when it happened. <laughs> so justice is really important to you then? Uh, yeah, I mean justice, like sometimes it's hard to know what is justice but but yeah does that expand wider than that as well do things that happen around the world that are out of your control does that affect you as well mm, things that don't affect me or like people i know don't have much effect on my emotional state uh, otherwise it's too, too many things to care i think about like it's many things happening and the information our brain can fit is not like too much still. I was talking about that to a friend in the break actually, mm. like let's not try to think about everything and try to focus on just one or two things, you know? Yeah, yeah it's a thing I learned about myself like last year or two to try to focus on less things in a way. Do you find yourself sometimes, or it sounds like you did find yourself overthinking some things a bit? <laughs> no, I was just thinking about too many different things at the same time and then like you lose focus. Mm. It's harder to do well what you're doing. With all your online play, your live play, you know, moving out of Siberia and going to Moscow, going into Macau, making a success yeah. yourself, and, and lots of other things that we probably don't know about, what would you say is one of your, or some of your biggest accomplishments in life? I would say my biggest accomplishment is uh, the way I play poker now. I don't value like some tournament results or something like that too much. I think it's really hard to play really good. So that, I would say that's my biggest accomplishment. What's your style of poker? How would you explain it? Because uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch those high stakes games. Yeah. So. I don't know, I'm trying to apply a lot of pressure and not to go too crazy about it, but 
I would, I would say. Uh, I usually go a bit too crazy. <laughs> and I'm trying to control myself. Why do you play poker? I really enjoy it. I, I really like playing the game. I really like the competition. I liked playing the games uh, when I was a kid too, all sorts of games. It's never got old? No. I mean, if I was playing only one form of poker, I would probably get bored of it. Like, I remember when I was just playing No Limit, and at some point I was pretty bored. And I was just like, okay, game is good, I'll play this game, but mm. I don't really I'm not really having fun. But now I'm playing like 15 forms of poker or something, and it's like always changing. So it's always uh, challenging for your mind, and I enjoy that. I, I enjoy like to be thinking about different things. I don't enjoy doing something repetitive too much. Like if you're doing just one thing, you're probably doing, going to be doing it really good, but I don't enjoy that too much. What are some of the challenging things about being a professional high-stakes poker player that maybe people aren't aware of? I would say people are unaware of how like how hard is it to manage your emotions and how, how hard is it to like, be able to play a lot even if you're losing, be able to play good, especially live and big if you're losing. Yeah, I think stuff like that people underestimate. How did you grow that skill? How did you evolve it and, you know, become better at not letting your emotions affect your decisions? It was pretty unusual for me. Maybe usual, but I didn't expect that. Like first, when I was like very introverted, my emotional amplitude, I don't know, was pretty like low. I wouldn't, I wouldn't experience like too high, so too low in a way. So I wouldn't tilt much at all. But then when I became more social and more emotional myself, I started to feel more and I, I, started, I realized what is tilt in a way. <laughs> and then I had to like, face it and to learn how to fight it. And I, I did a good job of that. How did you, how did you do it though? Was it just through, was it just through playing and experience and, and like losing your shit and then and, and afterwards saying to yourself, looking in the mirror and going like, don't fucking lose your shit again. <laughs> or, or did you like sit on a psychotherapist couch or did you hire Elliot Rowe? I mean, what I actually, the... I actually did talk to Elliot Rowe a couple of times. He was pretty helpful. Uh, I, I, around that time when I first started experiencing Tilt. It's pretty funny that I like started experiencing it uh, like harder Tilt on, on my like six year of career or something like that. And I, I was playing high sex for four years already, and I didn't tilt much before that. But it's, uh, I don't think you can stop tilting by just like going hard at you, don't fucking do that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that, that will work. So you need to go into reasons why do you tilt. Like it, it's got to be triggering something deep in you. Like the situation got to be triggering something. And you need to understand what's going on exactly. And for me, if I understand what is this actually triggering, and it's like it solves 75% of the problem. It's so interesting that you recognize that when you was introverted, things were more in control. And then when you started socializing with yeah. people, they started going out of control. <laughs> Did Elliot have a view on that? Um, I don't think I talked to him about that. I, I realized that myself maybe after I talked to him. <laughs> That's it, fantastic. I love yeah, it. It's, pre it's pretty funny. Yeah, it is. It's a good, it's a good reason to lock yourself away and hide <laughs> from people, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm in control now, but like I, ha I had some time, maybe one year or like eight months when it was harder for me to control till them. Like, what's going on with me? I was never like that. <laughs> and I guess it just snowballs, doesn't it? A little bit until you hit, the, you hit a hard stop somewhere along the line. Yeah. Did I'm, that affect your life, though? It's what you know, like you're, you're tilting at the table. Um, did that affect your life and your relationships? Like, was you a real pain in the ass outside of poker as well? Uh, I mean, I was less fun for sure, but because I, like, I do still hurt myself quite some emotionally when I'm doing something stupid. Hmm. It's, I started doing it way less than I used to, but m many people have that learning mechanism. If they fail at something, they, they hurt themselves. Hmm. They sort of punish themselves in their head, and uh, that's the way they learn because they don't want to do that again. <laughs> do you ever think about uh, purpose? Do you ever spend time staring in the sea, thinking 
what am I doing with my life? And Try to not. <laughs> I don't think that's very... Uh, I don't think there is a purpose. So thinking too much about that not not going to lead you to anything, in my opinion. Is that uh, that that decision? Where does where does it come from? Is it is it? You must have given it some thought to think that there's no purpose. Uh, have you ever had been engaged in a deep conversation about it or read about it? Or? Yeah, I uh, have. But I think it's uh, a little bit coming from uh, where I grew up. It was a like town where. Basically, everybody is an atheist, and like uh, everybody knows scientists or like uh, sci from scientist family, so people are very like science based. And in sci scientific community, I would think most people think there is no purpose in life. Right. Yeah. So, with the science background in Siberia, where do you stand on religion then? I wouldn't say I'm religious to like any of the known religion, but I wouldn't say. I believe there is no like superpower or anything like that. I think it's, some things might be possible that we are not aware of, mm. but I don't know which. There could be a super user out there. <laughs> we could be part of a game. Yeah, we could be. <laughs> yeah. like, we could be in the Matrix too. Yeah. I, I don't, Do you I like those movies? Yeah, I love the Matrix. It's my favorite movie. Yeah. The first one. When I first watched it, I just thought it was brilliant, like good action movie. And then afterwards, when I started to think about the nuance, and yeah. was, I was like, blew my mind. Yeah, yeah, same for me. First, I was like, good action movie, but then I started thinking more about it. It's pretty sick. Yeah. So if you don't really think about purpose too much, where do you stand on goals? So do you set yourself goals or do you just like go with the flow? For, for a very long time, so I would not set myself goals. I would just do what I enjoy. I mean, I would set myself uh, temporary goals. Like, let's say, I want to learn this new game. And uh, this next one year, I'm putting a lot of time into studying this game or uh, playing this game or do, doing some things. Or, like, I want to do sports, some, something like that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't set goals like, okay, in five years, I need to make X money or I need to, I don't know. Do something else. Have a family, find yeah. a wife, go yeah. back to Siberia, build a log cabin. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I, don't, I don't do that. Can you remember any great pieces of advice that people have given you in life or in poker that have stuck? In poker, I would say Phil Galfon's videos on uh, No Limit Hold'em, when I was just uh, climbing up the mid-stakes. They made uh, quite some impact on the way I was thinking. He's I a great coach, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I think those No Limit videos, like early ones he made, were really, really sick. He's a type of guy, he should go into a different business. I could, like, listen to him coach and, like, fall asleep to it. <laughs> He's just got a lovely way, he's just a lovely bloke, isn't he? No, I cannot fall asleep when I listen to him. <laughs> do you, do you uh, know him personally? Yeah, he, yeah, he's a friend of mine, I yeah. would say. I really like him. What are some of the what are some of the things in life that you can take from Phil and, and, and learn from and, and aspire to become and introduce into your own life? He got a very I'd say calm scientific approach to everything. I think that's a good approach to very many things. Mm, yeah, I should be thinking about that. How do you define success? In what sphere? Uh, poker. I mean, in poker, I would say the only reasonable metric of success is money. So, yeah, how much money you made. What does your average day look like? I know it's probably different all the time here. It's probably yeah. just poker, poker, poker. But I guess, split that question too. Actually, what's your, what's your day like when you're playing poker? And what do you do when you're not playing poker? Uh, it's, in a way, it's a depending on if there is a big game running somewhere or like if there's somebody willing to play me big then I'll build my day around that but if it's not I'll just mostly I don't know relax do random things go sport uh, I'd rarely watch movies I would browse some internet online hang out with friends a lot I can see now how you wouldn't you wouldn't like have a set schedule when most yeah. of your life you're just waiting to spring in the moment that somebody's available to play a game. Yeah, it's, it's not like somebody available, but yeah, some, some game available, I'd say, yeah. So you're really successful, both live and online, and then you decide to join Party Poker. Yeah. 
from, for what, from like looking outside in, it's like, well, what's he done that for? Because you know, he's a pretty quiet guy in, in the scene. Yeah. So why, why did you decide to join? I think I can make a little bit of impact on the, like in the long run, on the way online poker will be. And Patty seems very flexible and very forward thinking, especially Rob, Rob Young. He seems to be very, like very reasonable about the new things that need to be changed in online poker. And I thought I can make, make a difference there. So although you're not, you're, not, you're not thinking too much about what's going on in the world, you try to block that out. But for the poker community and the poker ecology, like, cause if it doesn't exist, you ain't got a job. You, you, care, you care about that and want to make a difference in that. Yeah, I, I care about, like, I would want there to be fun poker games and big poker games to play in 10 years and 15 years. And I think uh, we could make a difference if there, is, if there isn't. It's about the image of poker, it's about the way the game is played, if, the, if it's about the way artificial intelligence is faced and stuff like that. What's your view on artificial intelligence? I, I was speaking to Henrik Eklund mm -hmm. uh, the other day and he said that, you know, partly because of AI, he's getting, he was getting, you know, that's why he's coming to play live, like he, he's wanting to get out of it, he's worried about it. Yeah. Uh, and then there's other people who will embrace it and think, well, we can't fight against it, so let's, let's introduce it. Where do you stand on AI and online poker? I mean, I would prefer there would be no AI in online poker, but at the current state of situations, there, is, there are like, people who obviously use it to help and stuff like that. But I think there are ways to make the impact of it less. Uh, we can change the rules of the game slightly. We can make other measures to like control people who use that to block them and confiscate the money. Uh, I think it's it's possible to make it not so financially profitable for the bot writers or like uh, assistant tool writers to make those things, and then there'll be less of a problem than it is now. I know you don't spend too much time thinking about the future. You kind of focus on what's going on today. Yeah. But are there things that you want to do and achieve before you finally, uh, the game ends <laughs> and someone presses the off button? Um, are there things you want to do and accomplish? I don't know. I, I, there will be things for sure, but I, I try to, like, if I want to do something, I try to, like, if there is a thing I want to accomplish, a thing I want to try, I usually try to plan for it or, like, create a situation that it will be like, happening more likely. But I don't have anything like that now that I'm not going at. So if, I, if I gave you 10,000 hours and said, look, here's 10,000 hours, don't worry about it. We're going to press pause on the live. Poker will still be there when you finish. What would you, what would you want to learn? What skill would you want to learn in those 10,000 hours? Should I, do, should I just pick one skill? No. So that's pretty sick, 10,000 hours. I mean, uh, one of them would be Mandarin for sure. <laughs> so you can get that money off Jungle Man. It must have been <laughs> no, a big not, bet. No, not because of the Jungle Man money. It's just, it's very good for playing live poker in Asia to, to know Mandarin. And uh, I think it's good long term too, because ch Chinese markets are getting bigger and bigger. and. Many businesses are going to get involved with China, and it's uh, you're going to get better deals if you speak Mandarin. And finally, how does playing high stakes poker make you feel? Usually excited, and <laughs> really enjoy playing big. Well, Timofey, thank you very much for joining us and uh, answering all my questions. I know it's <laughs> not always comfortable, so I really appreciate it. I am Timofey Kuznetsov. I am high stakes poker.